Today's episode is brought to you by Dilly Company. Are you looking for some cool, comfy, pickleball gear and clothes for everyone? Dilly Company. Check out today's episode for a special promo code. Hey, Backseaters, producer Andy here. Welcome to the end of April. In the spirit of working hard or hardly working, we're happy to bring you this delightful replay from last year. I figured Taylor Swift is having yet again another incredible moment with her new album drop, so let's pause to remember her transcendent lord and savior-like impressions she left upon countless fans on the Eras Tour last year with today's throwback episode. If you haven't already, make sure to join us on the Dustin Nickerson Comedy Fans Facebook group for the podcast aftermath, such as bad science takes and polls that Melissa will most likely delete. Catch Dustin on tour at DustinNickerson.com and come back next week for an all new episode of Don't Make Me Come Back There. See ya. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Don't Make Me Come Back There. We are a funny podcast about family. My name is Dustin Nickerson. I'm stand-up comedian, the host of the aforementioned podcast. And alongside me in our state-of-the-art recording studio above Public Square Coffee in downtown La Mesa, California, is my lovely wife and co-host and uh, and joker pants girl, uh, Melissa Nickerson. Hey there. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Cheers to you. Cheers to us. To uh, To Public Square. To living and laughing and loving, you know, mm-hmm. a motto that I've been, I, 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 I made a craft Laugh. when I was uh, five years old in, uh, <laughs> in, in Miss Laughlin's kindergarten class. And I, I, I should have trademarked it there at five. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> Little did I know that that was going to become an anthem mm-hmm. for, uh, mm-hmm. for Julia Roberts movies. No, that was Eat, Pray, Love. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you couldn't make a movie with the word pray in it anymore. Like, like Hollywood has gotten so liberal. Like they're like, trying to take praying to. Like, are you going to start taking prayer out of the schools too? It's like you can't even put a Julie Roberts can't even say prayer in a movie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Hollywood is out of control. They're out of control. <laughs> Did you see the line? <laughs> Why is Ariel African American? That is ridiculous. Why do they have a Black Little Mermaid? That is stupid. That is dumb. I can. It's so forced. <laughs> I like that you won't give me this at all. I you won't to say like, don't. Everybody knows mermaids are white. Yeah, and they, <laughs> yeah. they just couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Those <laughs> those mermaids. They are under the, under the water. I've never seen one. They're not a real thing. But if I knew there was one, if there was one, it was for sure Caucasian. It would be. <laughs> I just it know. Just makes sense. I just that. Women fish in the ocean would be white. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Like Nordic white. Yeah. Yeah. Every vacation yeah. I go on in yeah. the Caribbean is with white people. Yeah. <laughs> the are white. If it were the Baltic Sea, maybe those are white mermaids. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if mermaid some furs on. Yeah, I don't know if <laughs> if uh, I don't know if race uh, is kind of regional, like it is in the ocean. I don't know if it's that way, <laughs> as as it is on land. Well, she'd be a siren then. She would be a siren then. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Anyways, we're off to exactly where I wanted to start. Yeah. Um, That's uh, R.I.P. Tucker Carlson on air. Um, <laughs> 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 he's gonna be back and bigger than ever. He's. It's, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't. I have no affiliation. I have no loyalty to anything anywhere. I'll tell you the little bit about I know about entertainment and TV and news. Are you a whale? Can you make us money? We have a spot for you. Hundred <laughs> percent. Tucker Carlson's like the number one show on TV. You think someone else isn't gonna scoop him up and be like, yeah, yeah, no, we like that guy. They don't actually care. Yeah. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, everybody, welcome to Don't Make Me Come Back There. 
We are a hot political take podcast about family. Speaking of whales. Uh, hey <laughs> uh, the um, uh, appreciate you guys tuning in to the little podcast that could hear. Uh, mm-hmm. Welcome back, Backseaters. Uh, we are here to talk about a weekend recap, some time in Tucson, some time in San Diego. Uh, we have some topics we're going to talk about, uh, about uh, trying to hang out with a non-parent when you have kids, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. A, a choir performance, uh, some acid reflux maybe, and uh, how Ooh. May is essentially a second December for parents it yes. is a busy mm-hmm. busy mm-hmm. time before we get into that a little bit of business uh, if you have not already watched my uh, comedy special runs in the family it's available on YouTube if you could go watch it and maybe text it to a friend because you can you can text a direct link because it's YouTube baby it's for the people and leave a no comment paywalls. That would be fantastic if you go in there or like it, share it, anything like that. If you're interested in seeing me on tour, uh, some people have been asking, like, hey, I'm waiting to watch the special until uh, after I see it live. Don't do that. It's different material on the tour. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, that's where we're at on the creative process right now is uh, this whole uh, this whole time opening for Tay and local shows uh, has been getting ready for this tour, and then I'll go iron it out. And as I uh, said in that video promo, um, it'll, it'll get good eventually. Absolutely. <laughs> mm-hmm. It this, always does. This one's going to be a little bit like watching the paint dry after the, or the watching <laughs> the guy work. So, um, and speaking of that tour, it's, uh, it's rolling out. Starts next weekend. In Salt Lake City, May 19th and 20th, Wise Guys Comedy Club, mm-hmm. and then uh, Brea at the Improv, the 24th, and the 26th and 27th at the Funny Bone in Des Moines. After that, we go into June, the 13th, 14th, 15th, Chicago, 16th, 17th, uh, San Diego, the 18th, LA, uh, the 21st, Orlando, the 22nd, Tampa, the 24th and 25th, Boston, the 28th, Charlotte, the 29th, Raleigh, uh, into July, the 1st, Charleston, 6th through 9th, Tacoma, 14th through 16th, Pittsburgh, uh, um, uh, on that note, the, uh, Cincy and, uh, Cincy and Columbus, I did have to move. Pittsburgh's probably going to get moved too. If you already bought tickets, it's fine. They're going to just transfer your tickets. Uh, there's just some family stuff going on, uh, that, uh, we'll talk about on a future episode. We're pregnant. I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 Melissa is due. <laughs> and- <laughs> What? This is the way we wanted to announce. Charlene, it. Melissa's mom. Yeah, I wanted you to find out right now. <laughs> uh, Not going to Philly. Podcast uh, <laughs> downloads have been ebbing and flowing, and we thought, hey, if Mel gets knocked up, um, that will um, really, Spike really get. Yeah. yeah, that's it's mm-hmm. going to really help. Mel is pregnant and the child is not mine. It's going to be some spicy, <laughs> spicy downloads. We're going to get into it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in in July, everybody. No, uh, we had to move Columbus to the 13th of December and uh, and the uh, uh, 17th of December for Cincinnati. And then the rest of the dates are on there. Fresno, Omaha, Milwaukee, Minneapolis. You get it. I, I, every time I do the dates, I just feel Andy and Melissa just tuning out. And, uh, I'm and, right here with and you. And being disappointed as I uh, <laughs> as I stumble through. It's hard to say all the dates. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard thing. It's just fine. so many. If just Mark so many dates. can do it, you can do it. That's that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Um uh, Patreon, so, uh, Zoom hang is May 22nd. We got a couple new right. patrons. People have been yeah. signing up. Thank you so mm-hmm. much. Patreon is just a way you can give a little more to the pod and get a little back from the pod. A little. A little, a little more. Or a little. Um, we got those monthly Zoom hangs. Monthly Zoom hangs we, are a good old time. We're giving you um, early access to all sorts of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. We got some new merch in the works, and we're probably going to let the patrons chime in on that. Oh, yeah. Um, merch in the works, baby. Merch in the works. We've got um, discounts on merch, uh, meet and greets at shows. Um, We've got a podcast t-shirt in the works. And I bet uh, I bet, I bet, bet the highest level of patrons, they'll probably just get that. I bet they get that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. I think so. Maybe. I think so. I'm going to have to talk <laughs> to my CFO about that. Yeah. She's a real bottom line girl. That'll make me a patron. Yeah, <laughs> if I got a t-shirt can. out of that. Yeah, a t-shirt's a nice deal. So that's part of working for us is also becoming a patron. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, membership. You know, if you're yeah. in, you oh yeah, yeah, in. I got to get uh-huh. back to what's being yeah. given. I yeah. need to see your it's, loyalty. Yeah, it's like yeah. when you work yeah. for a church and they want you to tithe. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I know, like I understand that I'm supposed to tithe and all, like, but it feels weird. Could you just pay me ten percent less? <laughs> <laughs> Skip the. They're like, sure, change. we'll take it right out of your paycheck. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay, deal. You're like, I actually I'm the children's pastor, so I don't think I can afford 10% less. <laughs> can, can I just go buy the goldfish crackers? Because that's what my 10% covers is the goldfish <laughs> crackers for the toddler. This is all hypothetical. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're so off the rails. This was on the fall side of the rise and fall of Marcel, if I recall. Um, but... <laughs> Anyways, that's a different podcast for a different time. Uh, well, uh, this weekend was fun. Uh, I was out with Tay again this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, as uh, you know, the fans of Dustin Nickerson comedy may be seen. I'm essentially on two tours simultaneously right now. And uh, the off weekends with Taylor, that's a funny thing we'll have with Tay. She'll be like, ah, oh, man, I'm waiting for a weekend off. I'm like, ah, yeah, me too. uh that being said it's it's so different opening for her and or like it's so different as an opener versus a it's like headlining oh my gosh it's yeah Yeah. and the the pressure Mm -hmm. of a theater show Mm -hmm. sometimes you look at like ticket costs and of an event and uh like sometimes when i'm promoting a club show Mm -hmm. at taylor's people they'll get they'll like pull it up like it's 20 dollars. i'm like yeah comedy can be cheap if you get in at my level Mm-hmm. If, you, mm-hmm. <laughs> if you're selling, you know, uh, a comedy club show on a Thursday, that's an affordable ticket, certainly in comparison. So uh, I did have one person come up to me at the show this week and they said, like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to, uh, you know, to like, I don't know if I have the money to like go to a comedy show. And I'm like, you just went to a theater show. <laughs> this was so much more expensive. Maybe someone bought him the tickets. I don't know. Uh, but we were out in Tucson this week. <laughs> Uh, I have so many thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mel, you Mel hates any excuse for like not buying tickets or supporting <laughs> the entertainer, the artist. artist. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll, I will. Yeah. But I also know that because I've done it too. If like you wait in a line and talk to like a semi-famous author, publisher, or uh, not publisher, author, you know, influencer, performer. You're going to say something super random that you didn't mean to say. Right, 100%. And so I will give that person the grace that that was their angle. They like, you yeah. know, you know, deer in headlights. Sometimes people say things <laughs> and it was exactly what they meant to say. And I'm like, Phew. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why sometimes when you go out and like work your merch line and I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I just, because it's heavy sometimes, or it's just comes out of nowhere. Or it's all backhanded compliments, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah. They don't know. What do you say? You know, you gotta like. It's uh, it's more impressive actually to like be comfortable with someone mildly famous than it is to like hit on somebody or to have Riz or whatever. Like, because it's 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 there's there's less pressure. Um, kind mm-hmm. of in that moment. Well, to like keep your cool, you know, mm-hmm. maintain being chill. I don't know. Yeah, because I still haven't learned how to do well, it. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You met Kevin Hart, and you're like, I'm shaking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's not like pretend you no, crushed your I mean, moment. You have to. I, I'm not saying I did. I'm yeah. saying that it's a skill that you have to learn. Yeah, and like by messing up. You have to I, if you if you think you might meet, meet someone famous, uh, you it it depends what you truly want out of that. Do you want them to feel comfortable, or do you want to get what you want out of the exchange? Because usually, what you want out of the exchange will make them uncomfortable because you're going to ask for yes. a picture, or you're going to inconvenience you, them some way. Bring them something. You're going to interrupt them in some way. Mm-hmm. Something along those lines. If you want them to feel comfortable. Don't ask for anything. Not to say that they're not willing. Like if you saw me in public or whatever and, and you're a fan, I would happily take a picture with you. I'm, I'm, you know, just in desperate need for that. Actually, I'm walking around uh, holding my ID up just in case. <laughs> I, 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 just, I walk around. Please recognize I walk me. around with a, a flat screen TV of my most viral clips going, it is me. You, I, you, I know you don't remember my name, but maybe you this saw me. me. Maybe you saw me yell into my phone in the Denver airport once maybe you saw that uh, but you know if you if you re- usually it's just like hey a big fan love your work something like that anything like mm-hmm. that is usually because I think most people appreciate that 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. My experience. Mercedes and I were actually riffing at home of the worst things that she could say when she got to meet you this weekend. Oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like, met last year in my yeah, drop, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, briefly at one of your shows, but mm-hmm. she got to, we, we got to come and hang out at the show. Yeah. And at home, we were going back and forth. I'm like, yeah, if you just showed up and then started telling jokes that weren't his jokes, thinking yes. they were his jokes. That is one of the worst things you could do. So mm-hmm. fun and awful. Yeah. <laughs> in the best way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Dustin, my favorite joke of yours is actually. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It is funny. That one, like that one, that one. Because it's, it's people a, get it wrong all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, you know about that one with the hotel rooms and what room he's staying in. That's yeah. my favorite. Yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, no, that's Jim Gaffigan for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a guy in the meet and greet line this time go, uh, "Oh man, I remember seeing you last time here, and you had that." And he, this guy was pretty hammered, and he was like, "You had that joke about day drinking. I was dying," and I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> And it was really. Did you start, just go like, "Yeah, man"? No, I wanted to know because I'm like, "You're you know, like, please keep talking." No, Tell I, me that joke. Yeah, again. no, I was like, "What was the?" Uh, and then I was, "Oh, I was like, oh, the thing about kids going back to school after COVID, and you know, <laughs> I'll take you to school, but someone else is gonna have to come get you. Me, and mom, I'm gonna get a DUI in the pickup line. That joke it was a COVID joke, and he was like, "Yeah, I think that might have been it." And I was like, "I mean, that's the only that day drinking joke I've ever." Li- <laughs> And, and and you know this guy had his uh his limerita in his hand or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, I can't believe they serve that at the San Diego Civic Center. That seems like a <laughs> seems like a classier venue than that. That is really funny when you go into like a really high end theater and someone's yeah. just drinking a trashy beer with lime. <laughs> yeah, you're like, really? Wow. I had a friend um who came to the Sunday show. And I waited in the lobby 15 minutes for them to get out of their seats down the stairs right. to the lobby. It yeah. was just like a sea of people. Yeah. Because there's three tiers. Right. And they were in the top and yeah. um, with their, you know, budget seats and, and all I, that. Yeah. And I was like, this is so many people. So many people. So many. And if like you're yeah. super uncomfortable about that, don't worry. My shows will not be like that. My shows will be so accessible. My shows will be an empty plane that you're like, oh, everybody gets their own row. <laughs> Which, by the way, my uh, trip to Tucson, we did all tallest to Tucson. That was the smallest group of people I've ever had on a plane. Hmm. We had, After like, all that. We had 35 people, <laughs> and they told us where to sit. They were like, we need to space out the weight here. Uh-huh. And, I, and like, I get that, but I'm also like, do planes, is it that fragile up here that like a couple hundred pounds one way or the other and like this bird's going down? <laughs> I think that's like with private jets, why they need your weight. Private jets, that makes a little more sense to me and that it's such a smaller plane. But I just, with a, with a big commercial jet, I mean, I'm an idiot. I don't know anything about any of these things, nor do I care to learn. Don't email me. I won't read it. I don't want to know the details <laughs> well, of how this. Doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no interest in that. But if there were talls there, I wouldn't. That means that I love Tucson. Tucson is like, Tucson is kind of like the dirty liberal hippie of Arizona. Mm-hmm. So I love it. It's right down my alley. I love it so I much. I haven't been in like six, yeah. seven years, and we just went to the zoo. So we dinked around. We saw some stuff. We went yeah. to the coffee shop it there. Remember? Me of Colorado a little bit. Sure. Yeah. 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 I can mm-hmm. say I. I. It has some Colorado vibes there. I like it, and it's got U of A there, which is like a good school and stuff. And we were right there, but so good crowds. Great crowds. Yeah. And you know what? Like, the older I get, the more I get the desert. The more yeah. I get, why old people love the desert because. Cold is the enemy of old, right? Like Mm -hmm. when you get old, the one thing you want to be is hot because your skin, it's just so thin. It's just the (laughs) the thinnest little paper towel skin. Lizard on a rock. Hot rock. (laughs) When you get old, Mm -hmm. your skin is like the other side of the pillowcase. It's always cold. It's (laughs) thin. It's worn. Ugh. It's it's it can't stay warm, and so you're like, I can't. So we hear about the extreme temperatures of the desert, and they're like, Yes, a hundred. Yeah. It's a hundred and three out. Well, I'm a hundred and three too. <laughs> Keep make me. I want a degree for every year of life. 
<laughs> make me warm. So I think they like. I think that's why they like it. And I also think that old people like the desert because you can die and nobody will notice in the desert because everything is. Here we go again. Because everything Here is. Here we go again. Everything is dead there. So we, it's not even noteworthy. Just you and the cacti. Yeah, it's not even noteworthy when you die in the desert. Like Californians want to parade when they die. <laughs> they're like, I'm dying. It's they're it's like they're gonna a California's gonna stream their death live on Instagram. It's gonna be a whole thing. They mm-hmm. want to parade. They're like, turn me into one of the the floats at the Rose Parade. Like they want a whole thing with their death. Not mm-hmm. in Arizona. Arizona folk are like, just throw me to the buzzards. There you go. Let me, okay. So I get it. I get it. I sure. think there's a certain. I get why people I go to died Arizona. When I moved here. <laughs> I don't think they died when they moved there. I think that they have committed to death. When you move to Arizona, we love Arizona. No, when you moving to era moving to Arizona is to start your decomposing process. <laughs> uh, the death part of my life has begun. <laughs> Anyways, great shows in Tucson. <laughs> Loved it. Great crowd. I don't know where to go from here. Great, great, great. Ha- it's uh, also Tucson is always like 10 degrees cooler than Phoenix. Yeah, that's nice. Which gets it down to a balmy 113. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Arizona is like, uh, it's very nice in the spring. Spring and fall, mm-hmm. magnificent are there because it's, yeah, yeah. I always say it's like reverse Game of Thrones. They're like, it's nice now, but summer is coming. Like it's right. it's in the wind. So mm-hmm. uh, so we are, and then we are in San Diego, which is, um, you know, where we live. Homework. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But not in the negative way homework, the positive Work way homework. from home. I don't know. What do you say? I home, always say it's a, a I always say it's a hometown gig. Yeah. Hometown, I, or yeah. it's a home game. That's okay. what, uh, you know. That's that's what the the old uh, the old athletes would call it, right? A home uh-huh. game. We're in yeah. town, mm-hmm. and sometimes that's nice, and other times it's kind of like it's a little uh, disjointed. Yeah, you know, that's a like, good way of putting it. Because we have this household of six, and everyone the whole weekend was like, "Why are you leaving again?" And we're like, "Remember when we yeah. got you rides home on, from your Saturday night event?" Th- they're like, confused. Three weeks ago, they're equally confused that I'm home on a Saturday. Yeah, and a Sunday. As they are to like, but why are you, why is mom leaving on a Saturday? Like that yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah, that's equally yeah. Perplex- perplexing or perplexing. Yeah, so it perplexing was perplexing is when you confuse which one of your pecs <laughs> is like, is this the left one or the right one? That's perplexing. <laughs> okay, perplexing is to be confused and it's perplexing. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like, is this the left one or is this the right one? That's our son with driving. That is yes, <laughs> thousand percent. <laughs> and also me sometimes. So let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I was driving you and Taylor. You're not the steel trap you the, used to be, Nickerson. From the airport yeah. to the car lot. Yeah. I said left and went right. Yeah. yeah. You've so, become my ca- bad. you've become way more kind of like airheady as you've gotten older. But I think yeah. actually I don't think it's airhead. I think it's you're a strung out mom. Yeah. And it's it's the opposite of being an airhead. It's there's so it's a it's there's a density. There's, there's so much in that head. There's t- so much to keep track of. Yeah. That I'm just letting I think your brain does that, right? It mm-hmm. it shuffles things out that yeah. are important, and I'm just doing that with. Yeah, mom's details. brains are like the chaotic notes of like an inventor. <laughs> like there's just like <laughs> scribbling, scribbling here, scribbling, 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 and I got to. Where's I'm, my research? I lost my research. I'm Einstein. Da, da, da. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, it's May. Um, everyone has a performance, like. Every week, I said that earlier, and I mean it. It is uh, and a field trip and a event. May and uh, Mother's Day, and yeah. our son turned sixteen on Saturday. I would say one of the biggest differences yeah. between one of the biggest differences between a parent and a non-parent is the month of May. Yeah, like if you're gonna work out in May, it's when you're brushing your teeth, and you can just do a couple <laughs> squats because that is literally the only time you will have to work out. You in might May. get. To- your calves might develop a little in May, but that's, that's it. it. That's it. And then 
like health, you know, healthy eating yeah. out the window because it's like all cakes and uh, coffee yeah. to survive all the evening and yeah. the weekend commitments. May is absolute pandemonium. May is yeah. a second December mm-hmm. minus the holiday. It's just the commitments. And May assemblies. Yeah, and, May is just yeah. the commitments of December. No without, holiday without at the, the end cel- of it. Yeah, without you know gifts. There's no celebration. <laughs> the closest you get <laughs> togetherness. To a, the closest you get to a celebration in May is your kid graduates high school, and you're like, well, actually, that's sad. <laughs> May's real gray on the hearts, man. And it's a. Uh, it's you're a, just building balloon sculptures around the clock. <laughs> And <laughs> handing out cash. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. pandemonium. May is pandemonium. May is probably the busiest because it's not like it's like a slow work month. Whatever job you, what job is slow during May? No, May is a. You have Little League playoffs. Yeah. So tensions are high. Everything is like at the end. Everybody's yeah. graduating because mm-hmm. every grade gets a graduation ceremony now. <laughs> Every season is in the so playoffs. Team, if your kid's any good, uh, team parties. Yeah, uh, everybody's got to get their trophies. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you know, yeah, most improved awards. Right. Uh huh. Yeah, we doubled down and had a kid in May. Yeah, yeah. And then also the one early June. Right. So then you know. <laughs> right. Right. There. I had a it, Mother's yeah. Day baby. Well, I my was first yeah. born. Well, I was gonna say that it's it's. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's nine. <laughs> It's uh, May is nine months away from fall, which is heavy mating season. So there are so many birthdays, <laughs> so many birthdays. in May. So many birthdays. <laughs> yes. The amount ima- it's uh, there's one for every day. Every and, there, you will go to a birthday every day in you May. You can also throw weddings in there. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, weddings happen in yeah. May. Mm-hmm. May is a is we put too much it's pressure stupid. on May. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah I would. <sighs> But it's fine. It was a bill, you know, and kind of remove it from the year. Yeah, you know, just like daylight savings. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. It's an it's an inconsistent weather month too. So mm-hmm. there's a decent chance you're gonna get rained on at a wedding in May. Yeah, you might have a uh, a baseball game pushed off mm-hmm. or rained out. Yeah, all those uh, Taylor Swift concerts in Nashville got rained. Yeah, yeah, they're all wearing ponchos. And stuff. Where was she doing the? Oh, she was doing it at the stadium. Yeah. Someone did the math. They they put together all the math, and they projected that the city made half a billion dollars in two days. Wow! Like just not oh just the tickets, gosh. but then the hotels, yeah. restaurants. Yes. They tried to factor it all, yeah. and basically they projected that Nashville made about half a billion dollars in two days. I mean, so we're in Nashville in July, and my mom looked it up. Ed Sheraton is playing. Sheraton. I I'm so bad at names. <laughs> Forgive me, forgive me. I Marriott. Yeah. My brain is slipping. <laughs> and that's affecting the hotel prices. So it's just nuts. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, Taylor Swift in Nashville. I mean, Taylor Swift is more popular than Jesus in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> just saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 She's incredible. The yeah. <laughs> I actually there there are probably a good chunk of white women. On a few, or a good, there is probably a good chunk of white women in Nashville that last week were like, "No, Jesus did return. She's back. <laughs> She's back." I read the scroll opened, and I ascended was, to heaven. The gown is a lot fancier than I thought Jesus was going to have upon his return, but she, but she's back, and she's better than ever. She re-released her uh, the Bible. It's called Jesus's version. <laughs> Now she has the rights to it. <laughs> Jesus is back, and she sold out three stadiums. <laughs> it was a second crossover. There it was. <laughs> it's great. Well done. Well done. I would have done it if I could. I would have made it if I could. I'm sorry, Jesus, that I missed your. I missed the rapture. <laughs> that would be the the, the next tour. They're just going to call it rapture. Yeah. Just, that, <laughs> the next. <laughs> Taylor Swift at the end of the concert, everyone just goes to heaven now. There's just gonna Spot- be lights drop. The spotlights <laughs> drop, and then there's just gonna be left in the crowd a th- like twenty thousand pink cowboy hats. <laughs> <laughs> and glitter <laughs> and glitter gloves. Yeah. Oh, I'd go if I could. And a remnant in D three on the far corner. Uh, just being like, what happened? Incredible, <laughs> incredible. 
<sighs> oh, yeah. Too we much. tried to, when we were here in town, we tried to hang out with our Taylor, Taylor mm-hmm. Tomlinson. Yeah. And that was kind of what we were talking about of like. Well, you guys traveled home Saturday. Yeah. Um, t- from Tucson to we've San been, Diego. Uh, we've been really spoiled since we got back from Europe because we've stayed in our time zone and we are, uh, we went to Arizona for we two days. Yeah. We were in, so we've done LA, San Diego, Arizona, and then this weekend we're in the Bay Area. So we're staying in California for a long chunk. And then we go and pay the toll in Grand Rapids and Colorado Springs and Kansas <laughs> City. All great places. Everywhere I just yeah. named places I really enjoy, but uh, hard to get places. Not you, a lot yeah, of Yeah, you've had easy travel. Yeah, there's a sense, there's a lot of Europe. Yeah, there's a lot of like fly into this airport, drive to this airport, that kind of stuff. That's what we get paid to do though. Yeah. The comedy's mm-hmm. free. The that you pay me <laughs> you pay me to find a way to get to Dr. Grins in Grand Rapids, which I booked today by the way. Grand Rapids. See you in February. I know it's weird when people are like, they're like, come to Michigan. And I'm like, I'm going to in February. And in their minds, they're like, I don't, am I even going to be alive in February? I don't even, you know? Who I knows? Could, I could be a whole different person they, by they next could, February. They could move by February. Yeah. And then they have tickets. I could, I could have, I could have, I could have, you could have another child. I could have like grown, <laughs> shaved, and regrown a mullet in that time. I could have been, I could have two mullets. I could have a two mullet era between now there and then. There you go. Mm-hmm. Me and my mullet will be in Grand Rapids in February. Yes. You, just, you never know. You. You. Yeah. Mel's got a mullet coming. Yeah. Shag we, mullet. We did like the little bald filter thing on a TikTok. We didn't actually post it. We just looked at it. And I was like, oh, I don't look that bad. And Mel was like, please don't let that happen. Please. I- <laughs> Mel, Mel, Mel ordered me some hats. <laughs> it's a filter. Yeah, it's a, I, yeah, you looked great. <laughs> you really did. I was like, wow, you really do have a pretty face. You got a pretty, pretty face. Anyways, but anyway. what we were talking about with um, where with, were we? With Tay was um, like she. We were like trying to get some boba and yeah. uh, with our kids, mm-hmm. and we told a phrase. This is a phrase that parents say that like maybe non-parents don't, especially on the weekends. Where she was like, we said like, well, we have a window. A window of time. We have a window mm-hmm. of time. And it was a window in between, like, post-church, post-kid drop-off at a bowling party. and teen party. At a yeah. teen party. Mm-hmm. And before our daughter had a beach day with a friend. That was the window. That was the window. Mm-hmm. And uh, and she when she texts us, she's like, okay, well, it seems like you're pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, we are busy, but we do have a window. We absolutely have a window. And- yeah, and the funny thing was, uh, one of our kids wanted. We were trying to hang out like a li- that little window with our kids because then we had to work at night and get ready. Yeah, and so we ended up playing Pokemon Go, mm-hmm. and then at we were like meal and an activity, and then our window kept shortening, mm-hmm. and then it became get gas and cheese sticks mm-hmm. while you guys played Pokemon, Pokemon Go, Go. Yeah, because. Um, it was crazy. It, mm-hmm. Balboa was crazy in May on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Sunday afternoon. And so we had to compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a well-known thing in our family that Mel gets hangry, that mom gets hangry. Yes. Which to me, nothing says you had a good childhood. Right. Like well, that's being your new hangry. joke. All right. Yeah. Well, don't don't <laughs> undercut the bit on the... He hasn't Andy heard it. heard it. No, no I, I didn't do it on stage. You didn't say... You did it Sunday. Mel, no, I did not. Did I do that joke on the, the hangry joke? Uh, I don't think so. Jeez. A couple other bangers. But Unbelievable. Well, thank you, Andy. You undercut the bit <laughs> as I was trying to set it up because in my mind, I was okay, like, I don't do think, it. no, I, in my I'm mind, sure. I was, no, no, in my mind, I was like, this is not, probably not going to make it on stage, so I'll just do it as a okay. clip on the pod, but yeah. it's over now. It's over now. Gosh. We can this. Unbelievable. We got Unbelievable. We got you know, our podcast starts to get a little respect. We hit the charts a few times. <laughs> We're getting people start asking when Mel's at the shows and the ego on this gal. I mean, you would think that it was her grinding in these rooms for 11 years. You'd think it was her getting booked to Dr. Grins <laughs> in the no, loony no bin. No email back from no, Dr. Grins. I got an email back. Yeah. You don't even- Ten years later. You're not going to get an email back from Dr. Grins, this guy, though. 
I can get booked at Dr. Grin's at the bare minimum guarantee. Had a Holiday funny, weekend. I had a funny email yesterday where they were like, hey, man, like it looks like you're going to like sell out in Columbus, even though we're moving it. And I was like, yeah, nice. It's really it's really starting to happen. The career is really starting to tick along for me. And it's great. And then I got the email from the Cincinnati dates. And they're like, hey, so we could move it. And oh, no, they said like uh, it actually might be best that it's on sale for longer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much that uh they're like maybe it'll go viral this summer. i know i know <laughs> but i will say i i told myself i'm trying to be more positive about my career be and be more grateful um because yeah it, getting to the point now as a comedian uh, or a touring entertainer artist of any type it's that's very normal to have good and bad markets yes that's mm-hmm. very normal like you have to be Big, big to sell out everywhere. Mm-hmm. Or one thing that's very common, uh, somebody people will say things like, "Hey, come to um, El Paso or Corpus Christi yeah. or like mm-hmm. you know, like smaller towns or like Springfield." And I was like, uh, "If there's not a comedy club there, you don't really go." Because ironically, you have to be pretty big to play the small towns. You kind of, yeah. you mm-hmm. kind of have to be like, "Hey, I got to play Philly," and anyone with f- within four hours of Philly needs to come in. So I can sell out this Wednesday. Like that's mm-hmm. that's kind of how it is. But getting to the place where you have good and bad markets is very common. Or even yep. sometimes you have just good and bad plays when you're there. Like, oh, we sold more tickets this time than we did last time and mm-hmm. uptick and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to complain about that. That being said, Cincy, get to work, Cincy. Get to work. I actually think I'm going to be there with Nate in the fall, too. So that'll help. That'll help. Yeah. I am so excited about our new sponsor, Dilly Co. Because I've been trying to get you to play pickleball for decades. This is not an exaggeration. Mm-hmm. And now you're willing to play in part because of Dilly Co. They yeah. make such great gear. You're wearing it right now. What do you like about their gear, Mel? Um, it's comfortable. Mm, very I'm it's... I mm mm-hmm. <laughs> mm, so comfortable right now. I love it so much. It's a good fit. Yeah, it's a good fit. It's good for everyone, mm-hmm. um, young and old, mm-hmm. and um, I'm ready. I, it is very I'm comfortable, hard. So which I'm going to do something I'm uncomfortable doing. Great. And I'm going to give it a go. And the gear helps. It is very hard to make uh, pickleball or really any sport like gear that is good for everybody, like yeah. all levels mm-hmm. of skill, mm-hmm. ability, body type, uh, comfort level on the court, and Dilly Co. has done it. All yeah, this stuff is great. great. Gear. Yeah, this it's great, great gear. gear. They've yeah. got uh, shirts. They've got uh, some of their gear is really great. I really like their paddles. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically, I like the paddles because they're like, again, they're accessible. They're great paddles. Like they're officially pickleball approved, but they're not like too much. You don't want to be the person doing too much on the court. So if you guys go check out their website, thedillyco.com, and you use promo code BACKSEATER, you're going to get 10% off your entire order. So check it out. Go check out all their great gear, and we will see you on the court. That's right. In your Dilly Co. gear. Dilly Co. Dilly Co. Dilly Co. Dilly it's fun Co. to say. It's very fun to say. I, we were talking about parent brain a little bit. I had this thought. Uh, this is, I don't know if this is a, a good or a bad thing, or this is just like a testament to uh, what what being in your 30s with kids is like, but I okay. forgot how many kids one of my best friends has. Yes. Yes. And he only mm-hmm. has one kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but to your credit. Did I save it? <laughs> Do you think he knew? I think he knew that because I called you out. <laughs> but I, no, 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 but I had to like correct it. Yeah. Um, well, what happened? To your credit, kind of in our circles, people don't have one kid. They have like a right. lot of kids. I'll set the scene up. So my friend said uh, uh, we were having lunch with him. He's a very mm-hmm. good friend. Like mm-hmm. he's been a friend for a long time. And yeah. now I don't see him as much as I used to because we used to work together, but I don't see him as often anymore. And he said, uh, yeah, we all went to Legoland. And I go, uh, how did they like it? And he goes, they. And I, I said like, they. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. You, you said it simultaneously. You okay. both caught it. Okay. Yeah. You really. both caught it. And I might have gotten away with it if you didn't say anything, uh, but you you made me look stupid in front of my friend. No, I did not. Uh, a guy who's a vendor of ours, by the way, too, which is great. He's a friend and a vendor. <laughs> a friender is what, <laughs> like Andy, a friender. We've got frienders. 
<laughs> and because uh, that's how you see your friends and, in your 30s you yeah. work with them and then i made a joke i was like well i didn't want to assume their pronouns i didn't want to you know i didn't want to make any three-year-old yeah yes. the three-year-old's uh-huh. pronouns yeah and um i just i what it is is he has a three-year-old kid and it's very common for for people just to crank <laughs> to crank out that second kid right after there sure I'm, yeah i mean it, <laughs> it was so embarrassing. I thought my friend had another kid, but he didn't. He's like the eight months old loved Legoland. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> well, it we happens. Tr- we tried to hang out with him, and he was like, "We have a window," and I was like, "I get it. I know what that means. Yeah. You don't have time. <laughs> you don't have time. I know parrot language when it's being thrown back at me." <laughs> I was actually. Uh, this happened. I don't know. Has this ever happened to you? Where like. You, um, (laughs) sorry, this is kind of embarrassing. Has that ever happened to you when you're like, hey, I'm going to text this friend, and then you pull up the text thread, and they've texted you weeks ago, but you never responded, and you're like, well, I guess we're not friends anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I can't respond. What do I do? What do I do? What's the, what's the courtesy? What's the move? Because especially when you like want something on that text, because you're like, ah, I do need to text you. I do this move sometimes where I'll respond to that text. Okay. Yeah. Like, and nothing then, happened. And then like, do I respond? <laughs> and then hopefully they respond back so I can ask what I actually want. But I, what you can't do, you what you can't do is text them. The want. The, the response. No, no, no. That, that, I actually think texting them your initial text is 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 a is better to do and just ignore their previous text. I actually think it's like worse. Like you deleted it? No, just like you missed <laughs> like it. Like you didn't see it. Like you didn't oh. see it. Oh, I didn't even see. Yeah. Oh, I'm so I didn't even see these come yeah. through. Yeah. I think the move is that. I think just act like their text never happened. Don't speak of it. Sure. Anything could have happened. You could have been on do not disturb. You could have been flying. You could have been getting a new phone. Anything could have happened. I lost your contact. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> uh, was a I was a, a freak submarine accident. I don't know. <laughs> Losing your contact is up there with freak submarine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the same. It, it, it's so phone. hard uh it's so hard to My kid had my yeah. phone. I, I never saw this. My kid had my phone is a good one. That's a good one. That, that is works. a good one. That works. Yeah, yeah. My kid dismissed this notification. I don't, my, yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, one of the main perks of parenting is all the excuses that you can get out of. You know, we had a guest cancel on this pod today, and he's like, my kid is sick. And I'm like, I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. I, I have a kid that tries to be sick every day. Every single day. <laughs> Just tell me, pal. Yeah, just tell me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. Uh, that's like when our kids like I don't feel good. You're like I haven't felt good a day of my life. <laughs> felt good in twenty years. Not a single day of my life. It was like I feel great today. <laughs> I am ready. Yeah, if it's not if it's not physically bad, it's emotionally bad. And now I'm middle aged, so it's both every day. <laughs> I don't know what hurts more, my heart or my heart. It's both. Middle age, yeah. zero out of ten. Do not recommend. <laughs> my knees. Zero, my, bingo, dingo. Yeah. My knees and my soul are crushing beneath me. <laughs> I am crushing them. The things that could stabilize me before I can no longer count on. <laughs> Do, can you get replacement knees and a replacement brain? <laughs> Sorry, this is just my... <laughs> Um, so my son's high school, they do these like parent talk nights and they're having like a mental health one Thursday. Yeah. And it's like in person. And I was just thinking about how like in the end of May or it's not the end of May, like who could attend a Thursday night at 6 p.m. mental health talk when they're going to be like prioritize sleep and eating healthy Mm -hmm. and continue to do activities that bring enjoyment to your life right and i'm like yeah i cannot attend that (laughs) thursday at six my life is too busy to prioritize enjoying any of it (laughs) i got too much going on that's that sounds lovely yeah yeah anyway may is just like you might as well just live in the car in may (laughs) 
It's so busy. You might as well just install a shower on the back of your minivan. That's what baby wipes are for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, just go. Yeah, exactly. Go straight. From, you're going like straight from the dugout. To, there's always some annoying grandma that has a birthday in May, too. That you're like, we don't got time for this, grandma. We'll celebrate in June. <laughs> <laughs> Quit being selfish, Grandma. We're doing this in April. April's a chill month. <laughs> it's nuts. How dare you be? How dare you be a grandma and have us gather around you in May? <laughs> the selfishness of some of these grandmas out here. <sighs> a true grandma would be like, just whenever is a good time for you. Can I? Can we? Can we? <laughs> That's what a good grandma would do. Can you squeeze me in? Could I? <laughs> A true grandma wouldn't even die in May. A good grandma would know that it's selfish to die <laughs> in busy. May. That's a that's too busy of a month. Yeah. You cannot die in May, grandma. <laughs> a good grandma is a silent grandma. <laughs> <laughs> like she can go like this. Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> We've gone too far, Dustin. We don't got time for this, grandma. <laughs> Got second grade graduation to get to. <laughs> Congrats on your life, Grandma. We don't have time for this. There's people with a future here, Grandma. <laughs> we got time to commemorate your past. <laughs> <laughs> it's too busy. Oh, man. I remember... So we had a wedding in Nashville in May, and Joel was writing an eighth grade graduation speech. Um, then they all submitted them, and it was like ten thirty p.m. on a Thursday night, and I was getting on a flight in the morning, and he had to turn in his graduation speech, and he was doing this like baseball metaphor, and we were just going for it, <laughs> like if we're all and if you're on third base, make sure you take the hit, you know, like yeah. He almost got chose. He almost got chose to to present his poem. Yeah, graduation. Yeah, he was a pinch hitter. For the- <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we got some, uh, we got some other other options here. Was, so you know, the whole analogy thing. Yeah, yeah. it was a nice idea. Yeah, it was nice. It's uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. Your brain found that right now. I know. No, I get why it happened. It's uh. It's crazy the things we choose to hold on to. <laughs> oh, stop. No, no, no. I mean that in a genuine way. Uh, John, Chris, and I were texting yesterday because it was like five years ago that we did like one of our first dates ever. Together. Yeah. yeah. And it was like mm-hmm. at a church in El Centro. Mm-hmm. And uh, I always remember I made the joke that uh, El Centro, gateway to Yuma. Like it's like a nothing city. Like even Yuma is nothing. Just I give you El going. Centro. Yeah. yeah. As mm-hmm. when people are like, come out to El Centro. You're like, No. That nobody tours El Centro. Um, you gotta come to. You gotta come to somewhere else. But mm-hmm. he was he was telling me he goes I, and I had forgotten this. He goes, all I remember about that gig is there was a pastor who did five minutes and bombed. <laughs> that is a thing that sometimes happens early on in those like church gigs when you're doing these like private events and it's not even just churches. It's sometimes there's a CEO, there's some son, there's some something that's like. I got a hot five for you. And it, I actually, it's so funny when they bomb. When they're doing well, you're like, oh, this is going to be the easiest crowd in history. Yeah. Because I've done like a lot of like volunteer appreciation events and stuff like that in churches. And when like the video is crushing, I'm like, oh, I'm about to bring this house down. Like if you guys, Mm -hmm. if you guys think the, the youth pastor's video was great, what do you get a real, what do you get a way to load of real comedy? This is like, this is, I'm about this. You know, gonna be cooking in here, but mm-hmm. uh, that's really funny. That's what I and John said that he was like, "It's amazing the things our brains choose to hold on to," <laughs> and he remembered that that pastor bombed and did five minutes in South Central. <laughs> amazing. Uh, okay, um, let's do a couple emails. Or do you got anything? Uh, else, Mel? Yeah, we got to do a Bingo Dingo Guardians. Well, you do. I didn't yeah. see it. You got to do some. Did you see that preview for uh, Elements? I've seen it with Claire on YouTube. Disney is just out of ideas. <laughs> oh, they are. I did. Because yeah. I was like, isn't this just uh, Inside Out? Yeah. <laughs> but like weather themed? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. what I said. I mean, they, I mean, Pixar, well, 
Pixar is just sitting around in the studio going like, all right, we've done the feelings one, we did a bug one, we did a toy one, we did a monster one, the- we did a superhero <laughs> one. What do we got left? The elements? <laughs> the fire girl wants to be a water girl. Or like no, a water no, person. She's, no, she falls for a water person. Yeah, and the dad will like never accept... Dating as someone outside of the river, and you're like, like hey, I just feel like we've yeah. done this. You know, I just, it's yeah. so funny. They're like, I, I, all we got left are the literal, the literal elements. <laughs> we've done every thing. Let's get back to the basics. Taika, we did a cars one. We did a planes one nobody saw. <laughs> we did three cars ones, actually. Uh, we've done. <laughs> they went to Japan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did a, yeah. We did a, we did a, a, a Japan one. We did a, uh oh the um the panda one yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they've done they've done them all the panda yeah. one here i got a pitch and i want to put it on the uh, public forum now so that way if they end up doing it yeah you know, i want to claim some rights yeah okay but i yeah. want a filipino immigrant story that started the tiki scene so they can connect it to the tiki room at disneyland boom well, that's like what it. i'm into that like yeah. yeah yeah mm-hmm. starring the rock yes <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Disney, my phone number is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if they've done a Jungle Cruise movie, there's no reason there can't be a tiki room. Yeah, or just yeah. The, mid, the mid-century I working really immigrant lo- story. Like, I love that. I that, wish they would. That is that is some of my favorite part of I Disney. Like I like old Disney, by the way. I like Jungle Cruise, the tiki room. That stuff's fun. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. I mean, it's better than the elements. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, there's just so many... There's only so many ideas left. Mm-hmm. Mel saw Guardians mm-hmm. without me yesterday. Um, well, that was not the plan. I'm gonna tell the, the I'm gonna tell the 30 second version of this. Ready? Okay. We yes. bought tickets to see. I bought on the wrong day. It's a mistake. These things happen. We bought five tickets to see Guardians. Yes. We read about Guardians, and they're like, "Hey, this is pretty intense. Mm-hmm. This barely got a PG-13 rating. Yeah. There's some stuff. No spoilers here. I haven't seen it. I can't spoil it. There's some stuff with Rocket and his backstory, like a and lot some of some animal stuff. Yeah. That if you have a kid that's sensitive to these things, particularly animal cruelty." you might want to have them sit this out. And you're like, well, I have a sensitive nine-year-old who loves animals and who got who saw the preview and was like, huh, I don't know. Are they going to torture a- uh, animals in this? And so we opted that Claire and I went and saw uh, Mario again, and then you and the bigs mm-hmm. saw Guardians. Yeah. And mm-hmm. this is a funny story c- before you get it, because you got out of the movie, and because it was a very emotional movie, you're like, Claire totally could have done that. And I was like, oh no. And then Joel was like, Claire, you should have saw that. And then what you guys proceeded to say after that (laughs) was Gloria, the 13 year old, cried the whole movie and you hid your head constantly and didn't even watch half those scenes. And I was like, it sounds like she couldn't have watched it. That sounds to me, and (laughs) Gloria's words were, that would have scarred Claire. And then you said, Mm -hmm. this was a funny moment in the van, actually. Mm -hmm. You said, will you just look away during those scenes? And then I go, I don't know if this is an ADD thing or it's just me, but I can't look away from a screen, yeah. even if I don't mm-hmm. want to see it. And then my two ADD kids in unison go, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a hat on. I, yeah, I, I, I was, can't look away from a thing. I, I cannot. I if there's some, I miss if, so much of that movie. If there's something sensory happening right here, I'm in. I mean, it could be mm-hmm. the worst thing in the world. <laughs> mm-hmm. It doesn't kill me. I ain't running. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. I, all this is going to do is scar me internally. Uh <laughs> But yeah, so you were able to walk away, but it 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 seemed like the right choice. Uh, yeah, reasonable I mean, head prevailed later when you said this was an incredible movie. Yes, but a nine our nine year old should not see this. Yeah, we we decided when it's on Disney Plus, I we can try to skip the scenes. Yeah, but there's and, a lot of flashbacks. And there's so many that I don't even know if we can do it. Yeah, the the format of the movie is they go back and forth a lot. That's what I was reading because yeah. it's very common. In Pixar movies, it's very common in Disney and Marvel movies to have like a tough scene up top yeah. or maybe later mm-hmm. uh, in the middle or something like that. Somebody dies, something like that. A scene you could fast forward, but this is very interchangeable. This is the whole thing. <laughs> and I think the reason I said that is because I wanted the five of us to have that experience right. together of like right. finishing this th- this trilogy. Right. Um, and it Rocket's, is very sweet. Rocket's backstory so is the sweet. main arc, right? 
It's the main Absolutely. story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you can't uh you can't shake that. But I think like the last 30 45 minutes like of a two, tie it up so well. Of a two and a half hour movie. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it's, it's a bad 2 hours and for a 9-year-old. There ADD. were two like on a Monday night in the theater, you know, opening weekend was last it was the weekend. Yeah. Um, there were two little kids in there. Yeah, but they were so little that the damage that was done there, they won't know about for years. Yeah. yeah. I think it went over their heads. Yeah. I, I guess. They were fine. I was not fine. I didn't watch any of it. <laughs> yeah. That's actually, <laughs> Mel, Mel also hasn't seen the movie. I already know you. It's a five out of five bingo dingos. You got, our kids came out, our older kids came out saying like, that was the best Marvel movie ever. It's their mm-hmm. favorite. Well, and our, our teenagers like, like- movies and the kind of the horror genre so like they wanted it's not to see horror it. what you're describing no, though. Well, like no. like the scarlet witch one was kind of on the horror because it was sam raimi and stuff and yeah. he does that that mm-hmm. movie was like scary at times this is like animal cruelty stuff like it's right. like a different... i don't even know because i don't watch horror yeah well so... you didn't even see guardians you actually don't know what happened <laughs> I'm very educated to give this review. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I read a review that said, <laughs> said I'm vegan now. That's like, <laughs> like it's, uh, it was pretty intense. Yeah. But, but amazing. Experiencing it with my teenagers was a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to go. I was like, I'll go to Mario again. And then you were like, I'll go to Mario again. Like we did not want to sit. Through I wasn't it. looking forward to it. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting is like, um, uh, Steven, former podcast producer, sorry to bring his name in front of you, Andy. Um, I know there's a lot of bad beef there from a guy you've never met. Um, Steven, it was really sweet. Steven texted me this week and he goes like, hey, would you ever want to see like a late night movie sometime? And that's like such a dad vulnerable thing. And it was yes. really sweet. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I didn't respond until I remember remembered later I had something to ask him. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. And uh, and I was like, oh, that would be perfect for maybe him and I go see Guardians after this weekend or something like that. Mm-hmm. But now that I know it's like a cry fest, I don't know if I can do that with Steven. I might need to. The most I've ever cried in a movie is Logan, which is a sad movie. Yes. Logan. Mm-hmm. And I was by myself. It's also rated R, yeah. I was by myself in a in a uh, in a theater in uh in Wichita, Kansas, already worth crying uh, about everything I just said. Like All a Friday respect- morning. Yeah, I, and uh, I just bawled my eyes out in a movie by myself. And sometimes I think that might be the best experience for a movie like this. But I don't know if is this like a tearjerker type one? I mean, yes. I cried a lot when Logan yes. died. And mm-hmm. then and then the opening credits are like Johnny Cash music. Wait, and you're like, I can't do it. How'd they know? You know, I already I even spoiled one. You spoiled, spoiled... a massive plot hole. I had to. <laughs> you did not have to. I did. I had to. I had to talk to someone about it. I know. That's the hard that's the main thing <laughs> is that you wanted us to have seen it so you had someone to talk to about it. But yeah. I'm either gonna see it this weekend by myself or okay. I'll see it with Steven on Monday. All right. Sounds good. Maybe I should get it on the books with Steven. I don't know what's happening Monday. I don't know what's I, happening any day of my know. life. Uh, yeah. let's do a couple of emails have a thing. and then we'll get out oh, of Oh, you're here. in LA on Monday. Oh yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I'll go see it with Andrew Santino. I'm doing his pod. Hey. All right, couple emails. Ready? Ready. Uh, this right here is uh, subject, my story. We haven't done one of these in a while. Ooh. This is from Jody. <clears throat> hey, Mel and Dustin. I've never watched a podcast before this week, and I've never loved your podcast more. Well done on this change. There you go. Yay. Video episodes available on YouTube, everybody. Mm-hmm. With this week's story about Mel's my story comes mine. When my husband and I were first married, we lived in an old Tad Janky farmhouse in the country. It was the fall, and it was our first year being married, so of course we had to carve our first pumpkin together. Cute, we kept and cute. cleaned the pumpkin seeds, and I had mm-hmm. them laying out on the table to dry. We went to sleep, and the next morning I... Uh, the next morning, Ooh. I swore that there were more seeds left than there were laying there. <laughs> I didn't think too much about it and went on with my day. Because I classically did not roast them immediately when dried, night two happens when they are still on the table. I awake to just a handful of seeds left on the table. Oh, no. At this point, I knew some someone was taking the seeds. I asked my husband. He didn't touch them. So we assume a mouse. We grab our coats to go to the local li- uh, local hardware store to grab some traps. Since the old house did not have a coat closet or any place to hang a coat, I grabbed my coat that was sitting on the back of the dining room table chair. 
I start to put it on, and all the pumpkin seeds seeds start falling out of my coat. The mouse had taken them and creating his little space inside my coat to live and eat pumpkin seeds for forever. I died. I threw my coat off and immediately stood on a chair in panic at thinking the mouse was still in my coat. It wasn't, but we did catch it that night in a trap. That's Ooh. hilarious. It was just moving. I got to get these seeds later. For the seeds. Um, we did have a house in Washington State uh, where we used a chair for coats because mm-hmm. we didn't have a coat rack. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have room for a coat rack. Mm-hmm. Yep. Next one here. <laughs> Subject, the pod. This is from Joshua. Hey, Dustin and Melissa, loving the pod, but I think I have a first for you guys. I think I'm the probably the first listener uh, to listen to an episode while underwater. I'm stationed on a submarine. Oh, my gosh. And I downloaded some of you guys' episodes before I left. Love listening to the pod. Been a listener since 2018. Keep up the good work. Respectfully, T-M-S-N Terry, J-N-U-S-N. I don't know if I should say that. Uh, Respectfully, Josh. Josh, I'm not going to do your full title and rank and stuff because I don't know. seems like something the military might not like me doing cool thanks well, for listening to the water oh gosh what a nightmare <laughs> what a night what a what a what a what a nightmare that is um being in a submarine scariest thing i can imagine i, I hate the ocean not not a fan so scary i think some people think that's really cool yeah no absolutely yeah and i love it's that it's kind of like going to space last email here we go uh subject what a killer special dearest dustin and melissa I just simply must compliment Dustin on the new special. Probably one of the tightest 45s I've seen in my years. Runs in the family is better than all of the dry bars I've seen. I mean, one of my dry bars is on there. So, uh, and overwhelm walks so it can run. Thank you for sharing your amazing talent with us. And it's an injustice to, it's only released on YouTube because it would murder on Netflix or HBO. Everyone who worked on it had the finest execution to the point where it was recognized by a 13 year old. Yours in humor, Nolan. Thanks, Nolan. Thanks, Nolan. Thanks, Nolan. Appreciate you so much, everybody. Runs in the family available on YouTube. Thanks for listening to the pod, everybody. See you in the desert. See you soon. Hey, folks, we want to give a special shout out to our as essential as oils patrons. Those are the top tier, baby. Mm -hmm. The best of the best, the $25 a month and up patrons. So thank you so much for supporting the podcast. We love you and appreciate you so much. First off, Avril Griffiths. Adam Bush. Allison Nelson. Bonnie Galindo. Brandon Schoenberger. Carrie T. Christopher Finland. Code to Grow. Courtney Eibling. Damaris Diaz Stevens. Daniel Owens. Dave and Melissa Cox. Dave Hoagland. Dustin Daly. Jason and Francis White. Jessica Hanharan. Joshua and Nikki Platt. Jordan Cowan. Juliana Smith. Lori Amos. Matt and Sam Slosdom. Michelle Calson. Nathan and Jennifer Merritt. Nicole Carose. Rachel Wilson. Robert and Nellie K. Penn. Rachel Kennedy. Steven, Nina, Tiffany, Payne. Thank Thank you guys so much for your support. Bye. Bye.